Hello, welcome back. We've got a Triumph Stag video this time. Well, it's actually Triumph Stag and Stromberg Carburettors. So this is really focusing just on the Strombergs. Um, they've been on the car. I refurbed them a fair few years ago, and now they need tuning up. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. If you want to give me a thumbs up, thank you. If you want to give me a thumbs down, it happens. If you want to tell me why, I'll listen. I can be contacted, Church House Classics, it's all one word apparently at gmail.com um, and i've also got a website churchhouse classics all one word dot co dot uk if you want to give me a pint or support the channel in any other way the, the channel is really about me helping other folk there's no obligation i don't expect it but if you did want to support the channel or you did want to buy me a pint then there's a paypal me link scrolling along the bottom of the screen here somewhere but it's also in the description below this video I thank every single person personally who has donated towards the channel or even bought me a pint. Thank you very much. As you can hear, it's quite blowy. Right, I've got no idea if this is going to work or not because it's blowing a gale. Um, and if I have to talk it over, then I have to talk it over. A pair of uh, Stromberg uh, 175 CD2s. They've been on this car um, for this many years. Insert in description. And I just thought I'd give them a quick going over. Uh, no apologies for the state of this engine bay, it's an engine room. It's not going to be a large scale strip down, this is going to be more of a, um, just what I might do uh, with these calves while they're in service, just to make sure everything is operating, behaving as it should be. Oh, that's annoying as well. I'll tell you another thing that's new on this car, that has absolutely just melted. This fucking thing. It's good enough. It'll still draw the um, still draw the air. Um, right, vacuum advance is working. That can wait up there for now. Right, first thing you want to check is on the carburetor pedestal here. You need to have free play. You need to have a gap up here. And what the book says is five mil. It tells you to use a five mil um, shank or, or, or rod, but. Be honest a five mil drill bit will do exactly the same job and that can come out a little bit oh no it's fine goes in goes in remove the screws just want to check the diaphragms check the needles are moving under adjustment they're not maxed out That's the main thing here, it's just eight screws, it's not the end of the world. I'll also go through the... Uh... So in here we have got dash pots. We've got a bloody great spring. We've got the damper itself. And the diaphragm. So the diaphragm looks to be intact. We can double check this when the engine is running just to make sure that the, uh, the piston goes flying up and flying down. Now this needle is set just slightly up from the bottom and it's raining all over my back. That's pleasant isn't it? Never mind. A hey. Right then, now temperature compensators. These are these two things normally have a yellow plastic cover. These ones are not yellow for some reason. I don't know why. Right, and there's the other one. I'm getting gasket in place. Now, I'm going to go and relocate somewhere less windy. I'm going to go through. Okay, right, let's do this. Um, so, in order to set these things up, you need to disassemble them first of all. Make sure that your biometallic strip is not deformed. This one is. If you're unsure about it, um, run it under some cold water. Here one, I can see a ridge along there where it's been over tightened. That's better. You've got a cutout on one side. You've got a ridge on the inside there. Make sure the plunger goes in and out comfortably. Reattach the bimetallic strip, drop it into plunger, 
and screw down. That's the kind of the rigid fixed screw, not the adjuster screw. So I'll just screw that in. There he is. You can see already that that action of putting that screw in there has lifted the plunger up quite high. Washer goes on, followed by adjusting nuts. And just what I want to do here is just wind this adjusting nut down. Wind the adjuster down until the plunger just closes this hole. I can see it's working its way down. I don't want to go absolutely berserk on it. And by blowing into the end hole, and the air should come out the side holes. Yeah, that's what I, that's that's where I'm testing it. Just by putting it in my gob. Right, that's done. Now. Both of these do exactly the same. This one's been apart already. That's good. Let's double check this one. Happy with that. So that's both of those down. Now what we need to do is we need to get busy with a pan of water. Piece of piss, this pan of water. Water temperature is currently I want really a thermometer that goes from 40 to 50 to 60, but you know, I'll deal with this. I'll work with it. <clears throat> Pops going on. And what I probably want to do now is have these on their sides. Like that. And I should see the biometallic strip start to When are they moving? They should start to move soon. This is where the thermostat really helps. Thermostat, what are you talking about, Richard? Thermometer. I test them on thermostats like this too. Right, they're both moving. I can see it. So first and foremost, that was not quite opened up yet, but it's moving. This one. That one's opening. This one. Loosen this one off just a quarter of a turn. Let's try that again. So in the water at that temperature. Has that opened? Yes, it has. It's opened. Now what I'm looking to is as the water starts to warm up, what I'm really looking for now is to check that the plunger drops. They're both open. I can see that the plunger's dropped down. See that the plunger drops at the same sort of rate. That one's all opening faster than this one. Let's slacken this one off a little bit. Right, what we can do, if there's ever any doubt, we will reset by running them under the cold tap. Test them both cold. Both closed. Put them back in. That one's opening quite quickly. That one's opening quite quickly. They're both opening. We're up to 50 now. As the temperature goes towards 60, I expect to see them both fully open. Here we go. A little bit of um, tread lock. Can you actually see what we're doing here? Yes, we can. Oh. On there. And on there. Do the job. Stop it from potentially loosening off. I can't guarantee it. 
damage it, but it's got to be better than nothing. Setting the revs at 1500 RPM, and then testing the airflow here. Okay, so I can't do that one hand here, so you have to watch from over there. You probably can't hear me either because of the wind. So we'll adjust the balance between these carburetors by adjusting the rod on the back there. Just copy off the lock now. We should be able to. Now let's take back the thread, aren't we? I thought this this would never be. I thought I had a reverse thread on it. point is doing it that way. Uh, I thought this had a reverse thread in it and it doesn't. So I'll tighten that back up again and I will just work on the uh, on the end pieces. Right, cherry stroke. There we go. What have we got now? 1500 RPM. Now I've got that reading 18 and a half. This will be way more. Wound that one turn and it's got it pretty much where I want it to be now. Which is good news. Right, I'll just check these two are tight. Yes, that's that. So now let's check the balance at idle, which you do with the um, throttle adjustment screw. So you've got a throttle idle adjustment there and down there. Um, and those are the ones you, you would adjust ready for the, for the, the balance of the carburetors at throttle at the idle. So on here I've got a smidge over six, and here I've got seven. So let's wind this carburetor up a tiny bit, just by adjusting this throttle. Um, we're currently idling at seven and a half yet. So before we go on, That's about 750 RPM. Clear it through. That's now at 7. That's at 5. So we'll take this one back down at the time of it. I'll get my screwdriver in there. So idle speed's gone back down to 700. So let's go back up to. 750 and I'm here back up to right over 800 half yet now so it's going to be down a tiny bit now it's definitely this car rest is not that over 800 half yet Here. Bridle, I'm happy with that. That's reasonable. 
So at idle, both calves are drawing the same air at 1500 RPM. Again, just by adjusting my box over there, my box of tricks, and adjusting the throttle up to 1500 RPM. I'm pulling just 20. I'm pulling. 20. So as far as the um, balance is concerned, now I'm happy to take this back on. One thing I did want to mention to you guys is there is right there there's a little damper when you open the throttle you can see the pin is coming out of the housing just on the tip of my finger here you see a little brass pin come out quite important that that is free if it's not free get some carb cleaner squirt it down here don't try and wedge it backwards and forwards you can put a very very thin screwdriver down that hole to push it out but it should be able to free it up just with some carb cleaner it vents the the, the, um, the float chamber so you've got two of those um right in order to tune this thing up with the engine running all i'm really going to do because i've got them balanced i'm happy with the balance um all i'm going to do is to lift each piston it needs to come up about half a centimeter it's difficult to see let me go to the other side it's probably easier to see because the sun's shining up i say sun hello that's wesley there's sandy over there and red shed and so forth diana we're all here Right, so basically you can see inside the throat here, and I'm looking at lifting it about half a centimetre, but not a huge amount. So by lifting it, um, if it stalls, it's too weak. If the revs increase, it's too rich. If the revs dip slightly, but the engine stays running, um, so it just kind of falters, then it's about right. Okay, that's what you're looking for. And then to adjust it, using on this car, on the stack, you use the hex tool, not the other style of tool. Um, and then once I've got the mixture about right, then I will be fiddling around with the balance again. Because of course, once we change the mixture, we'll just need to recheck the balance between the two carbs. Right, it's all settled down. We're running at 800 RPM. Um, we're running at 800 RPM. I might go, just go back a quarter of a turn on that. So I'm going to a quarter of a turn clockwise. clockwise to enriching. That's much better. Look this side. Might mention that just caught on the turn as well. We don't need a huge amount of this. Located, corporate zone clockwise, it located first. Quarter of a turn on this one now. Clockwise, just wrenching it. One more quarter of a turn. I'm going to go to six. 
reps of rising, so you know it's working. So stalling it again. Clear it through. Quite sweet, isn't it? I think so. I think we're there. You don't want to run it too lean. Seems quite sweet. That's much better. Perfect. I'm not going to fuck around with it anymore. Um, I do these two now. I do need to check the air flow again. So we've got seven on that eye. to 8, 750 RPM and 8. So in order to adjust the idle balance, I'm messing around with the throttle bump stop here and there. What I need to do now is to check the balance on the car register at 1500 RPM and that is all to do with the, uh, the throttle levers itself. So all I do here, I plug it in, I dial up to 1500 RPM using my TACO there, and that's running at between 18 and 19. Go on the other side. We know the vacuum's attached, just push the we'll push the uh, pistol back in, which have been taken up earlier. Obviously I'm pushing the, the dash pop down while I'm putting the pistol in. Push this in. All right in there. Just use a 2050 engine oil on these. I think I'm happy with that. I've got idle speed at 780. Seems quite happy, isn't it? 